delegation to France last week to participate in the strike movement and to find out what's going on. And the general strike movement in France, I think a lot of people in this country believe that it's very easy for the French to strike, believe that it's very easy for the French to organise a general strike. But it's, it's not. The strike that's been organised in France has been extremely difficult. It's been a complicated political process. The first one part of the workers' movement going in to fight against the pensions reform that Sarkozy is pushing through and then another. And at each stage, the knowledge that each group of workers is supported by each other group of workers has been very politically important. The strike is conducted through workplace meetings, workplace meetings which take place in railway stations, in oil refineries, in schools and communal kitchens, in uh, municipal bin collecting depots, in, in, in workplaces across France. It's in these mass meetings every morning where the decision is taken by the workers in that workplace themselves about whether or not to continue the strike. And it's their confidence every morning which decides whether or not the strike is continued. And what decides their level of confidence is the political solidarity that each group of workers in France feels from each other group of workers in France. Last week, on uh, Wednesday, it looked like the strike was in a lot of trouble. On the Tuesday, there had been a one-day general strike and three and, a half million, three and a half million workers had come out. But then the following day, on the Wednesday, it looked a lot like the, uh, the strike was going to blow over. It looked like it was losing momentum. And a lot of people were worried that the strike would not succeed, that it would fall through. But what happened then was 6,000 colleges across France, 6,000 FE colleges, students, 14, 15, 16, 17, came out on strike themselves. 700 colleges were blockaded. And the students at 2,000 of these colleges across strike came out on strike visited picket lines and joined the workers there. On the Friday morning, I was in a mass meeting in the Gare du Nord in Paris. And the rail workers in that station said that previously they'd been planning to go back to work. They didn't think that they were confident enough. They thought they were all alone. They didn't think they had the support of the rest of the French workforce, the rest of the French population in continuing the strike. But the fact that the students in colleges and universities had come out the day before gave them the courage to carry on. And then later on, a similar situation occurred with refuse workers in Marseille, dockers and oil refinery workers who've been facing massive pressure. Who've been facing massive pressure. 30 workers at the Grand Prix oil refinery near Paris were threatened with five years imprisonment if they didn't go back to work. Strikers were beaten up by riot cops. People were threatened with jail if they didn't go back to work and load up oil, uh, oil into, the, uh, into the oil tankers. And yet, because the strike was able to spread beyond transport, beyond the oil refineries and into other sectors of the workforce, into aviation, into the post, into municipal services, the workers in the oil refineries were able to stand up to this repression and they're still standing up to it. But we have a role to play in this country and we have a role to play in other countries as well. We have a role to play in this country, we have a role to play in other countries as well because the strike is entering a difficult period. The French Senate has just passed the law. The French Senate has just passed the uh, pensions law definitively. And now it's no longer a question of preventing the law from being passed, it's a question of having it repealed, which will be more difficult. Some, some groups of workers have lost as much as three weeks wages and they're finding it extremely difficult to carry on. And what is necessary for us to do is show again that political support to show that to those groups of French workers who are still on strike that they're not only supported by other people in France but they're supported by other people around Europe and it's also necessary for us to send donations to send money. On the Workers Liberty website you can find details of how to organise a donation from your workplace, from your trade union and if we can organise donations through our trade unions through trades councils, through tenants associations and send that money to French strikers who are desperately in need of financial support, then the strike will be able to carry on. And uh, basically that's something that we should all go back and do. We should all go and send donations to the hardship funds of French strikers, especially French oil refinery workers. <laughs>